Welcome to another video. In today's short, we're going to be talking about, just in general, the sport of triathlon and what are some of the lessons I've taken from 2020. And there's a lot of lessons that come from 2020. Uh, one of them that I'll be mentioning on here in today's short, but I'll be doing a series of videos on several of the different lessons that I've learned in 2020 and how it can help you with your training. And so in today's lesson, or really, I shouldn't really say lesson, some of the things that I've learned from this past 2020, which is really a lot of people would probably want to forget in terms of general triathlon, since there really wasn't much of any racing. Uh, the only race I did was like a 9K, which really was, I mean, not 9, I think it was like 11K or something like that. But there wasn't much of any races, but there were still lots of opportunity in 2020 to go and experiment with different types of training regiments. And uh, one of the biggest things that I've learned, especially with the pandemic, is having a job full time. Um, what you'll be seeing here is going to be one of the biggest lessons I've learned in all of 2020. And so I want to start it off by saying about, well, we know triathlon is a multidisciplinary sport. And so we often associate triathlon with three disciplines. And I write the question mark on here with four because I think some people will know what this fourth one is. But let's start off with the three disciplines, shall we? So we know we've got one, which is a swim. And of course, I use blue because while well, a lot of people think swim with uh, blue with the water. Then we've got the second two, which is the bike. All right, on here, and then uh, apologies for a little bit of the glare, but then we've got the third part, which is going to be the run. And the fourth discipline that most people will think about when they think about triathlon is uh, what about what happens in between here, right? We've got the transitions, um, which people can think of as the fourth discipline. And they aren't wrong. Triathlon is basically four disciplines on here. And so when we think about these four, or I should say three and a half as some may call it, um, this fourth discipline may or may not be applicable. And the reason for that is Maybe you're just looking to complete triathlon for the first time. Or whether you're just simply wanting to go and enjoy races, which is another lesson for another day. Uh, and unless you're really gunning for being first in your age group, or winning the race outright, or going to Kona, or qualifying world championships, most likely this fourth discipline is really not going to pay much attention. But I'd like to argue that there's more than these four major topics. And a lot of the time we talk about, oh, how long you could go swim, how long you could go and do your bike rides, do those three-hour, four-hour sessions, or crank in those intervals, crank in those threshold VO2 max anaerobic sessions, running your best 5Ks in a practice. But I'd like to argue that, to heck with that. Um, because there's a discipline on here that is more important than any one, if not all, of these disciplines combined. That's right. We've got the fifth discipline, which is nutrition and recovery. And it's one of the biggest lessons I've learned in all of 2020, is that you cannot neglect nutrition and recovery. It's all away from the exercise. Now, why is this so important? Because it can deal with several things. Because we go back to these three disciplines that we have on here. You have your swim, your bike, and your run. You can continue to go and train and do all sorts of great performances. But what happens in between? Your body has to go and recover. You have to go and uh, treat your body the way that it needs to in order to perform. And 
whatever you put into your body is ultimately what is going to affect what comes out in terms of performance. So going back to nutrition and recovery. What is so critical and what I learned from 2020 is what you put in in terms of the nutrition will really matter. And uh, what I did this year was I cut back on the alcohol consumption, even over the holidays. And uh, I also ate less carbs in terms of overall types of calories. Now, I was going a little, I was kind of going pseudo keto, but not fully all the way. Um, I had somewhat of reduced carb intake, uh, but I increased the amount of protein. I increased the amount of vitamins I was putting in the body. I started putting in a little bit more vegetables into my diet and it made a difference. And even better, what was even more startling or at least a bigger factor for me on the recovery portion was how much sleep your body is getting and what a difference it makes. At least when I was starting to work virtually uh, because of the pandemic, it allowed for a little bit more flexibility in my sleep schedule. And I do have, for, for those that know me, uh, for the work that I do, I have calls with Asia. So I usually have uh, early mid-morning calls, of course, with the U.S. and with the folks from around um, the U.S. And then I go late at night to uh, have calls with Asia. So you might think, well, sleep is going to be hard to get by. But in fact... Uh, what I started, what I averaged, and I took a measure of this from last year. Last year, I averaged probably about six and a half hours of sleep a night with this work schedule prior to COVID. So 6.5 hours in 20, uh, actually in 2019. Uh, and this was... And what I mean by six and a half hours is this is six and a half hours of deep rest, right? Uh, six and a half hours of deep rest for a guy that is just shy over 30. Um, when it comes to athletic performance is not ideal. Now, some people can do it and you can do it with lots of caffeine. But again, nutrition. Uh, I realize that I can't have as much caffeine in my body uh, that I was able to at least when... I was on the road a lot more prior to COVID. Now, with COVID hitting, I didn't really need to have as much caffeine, and the caffeine was really replaced with sleep. And in 2020, during COVID, and we're still going through the pandemic right now, I started to measure the number of hours of sleep that I was getting. I was getting 7.2 hours. You might ask, well, this is not really that big of a difference, right? Well, it made a massive difference in terms of performance. It allowed me to not burn out, which is the key here where uh, with nutrition and recovery, you do not want burnout. No. That's the last thing you want to do because that's, uh, what causes people to get really frustrated with their training and not really be able to be happy with uh, really doing any of the po any of the disciplines and to even talk about it. And there's a whole other thing about mental health, which is another video topic on its own. But 7.2 hours of sleep in 2020 made a massive difference in terms of overall happiness, performance, and uh, health physically and mentally. And so if there was anything that I want to take away from 2020 and all over discipline in triathlon, it is, it is not just three disciplines, it's not just four disciplines, but it is indeed five disciplines with your nutrition of what you are putting into your body and recovery with the amount of sleep that you're going to get just simple things like that can make a massive difference in your performance in triathlon. And that stated, that's what I have here. 
So if you have any questions or comments, please post them down in the comments section. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click a like to this video. And if you like more of this type of content uh, using the whiteboard here, go and click the subscribe button. That'll help me out a little bit. And with that, I'll see you in the next whiteboard session for the next lesson from 2020. And yeah, that's a virus. I tried. Um, I used to draw in, uh, in college and, well, I kind of still have a little bit of it, but I kind of made it a little bit more simplistic. So with that, I'll chat with you guys next time.